morning. The program is Viewpoint. The program of personalities, politicians, and perspectives. And we sure have a personality and some perspectives this morning. Happily, we don't talk about the politics. Unless, by the way, uh, Kara, uh, <laughs> do you save your emails in business? I want to know, are they secure? I guess so. <laughs> okay, all right. That's all politics we're going to go into. Uh, <laughs> kudos this morning. Judy has some kudos, and I have a couple here, or one particular. You know, uh, just by very nature of the things, uh, non athletic events in schools and so forth don't get much, as they say, you to say, ink. Now, uh, ink and or airtime. Uh, just that's the way it is. It's uh, pretty hard to write up that. Uh, uh, Johnny with three brilliant moves checkmated Mabel uh, at the last minute so uh, they can't make chess very exciting or anything else like that that has to do with academics but um, these young folks work just as hard in their uh, little spheres so um, we had two youngsters out of Chester East uh, yes that way I'm right about that Help me out, Jim, if I'm wrong. I think it's Chester. Uh, <laughs> Jim they, just uh, uh, they entered a contest. Jim smiles at <clears throat> Excuse me, please. An elementary school <laughs> chess contest. And um, let's see, Nate Arnold and Peyton Richards came out with uh, bronze medals, uh, third place winners. Good for them. You know. In uh, chess. Yeah, in chess. And, well, I, uh, that you know, just proves that there's life after basketball. Well, exactly. That you you. you you rose to the point. You surprised me. <laughs> but seriously, uh, Life is these youngsters do uh, uh, work hard in those little uh, other extracurricular activities other than sports. So it's nice for them to get a little uh, little tip of the hat once in a while. So congratulations, Nate and, and uh, Peyton. So, now you had a couple of. Uh, yeah, I, uh, there's. It's over now. Your time's real. Out pretty front page on the paper today uh, with pictures of the Atlanta Library and the Lincoln Library, both of which are gems. are so beautiful and such gems. treasures for their communities. And uh, hats off to the libraries of the towns of the world. And secondly, um, Habitat for Humanity is uh, having the groundbreaking for their 19th home on Sunday. And it's going to be at 537 10th Street. And of course, the public is invited. And it's at 2.30 in the afternoon. And I'm just going to go out on a limb and say that they're going to have tea and crumpets, because they usually do. Well, and it's, it's just a nice thing to know that this is their 19th home. Boy, I'll tell you, that's a lot of people hauling a bunch of chili out there for their lunch and a lot of people with saws and hammers putting up a home for somebody who has to put something on the table in order to have this home. It isn't just given to them as a gift at all. They have to have a lot of sweat equity in it and yeah, they have a, to pay for it. That's a wonderful program. Uh, 19 homes. Huh? And I might just add uh, very quickly, uh, Mr. Ash, that uh, Mrs. Busby has uh, extra reason to be proud. Her daughter, Sense, who sits in there once in a while here in her absence when she has to go to the Betty Ford Clinic, uh, <laughs> sits and does a great job. And uh, uh, Sense is president of the uh, Habitat Association, so I take my hat off to her, too. I have a great kid. She's so, a good girl. Why don't we go down to Ben's this morning? We I have a great guest, and I'm going to ask you to take care of the honors of the introduction, my dear. Kara Davis is uh, <coughs> new, relatively speaking, to the Logan County Department of Public Health. Now, that's not the Lincoln Health Department. That's the Logan County Department of Public Health. And we're going to talk with Kara. As she, in her capacity, is director of nursing there and as also the associate uh, administrator. Uh, we're going to talk about inoculations. There's been an awful lot of press for that lately. Uh, there are two camps. I'm in the old people's camp, <laughs> and many of the younger parents have decided that uh, they're not going to have their children vaccinated because of possible side effects, real or imagined. And um, therefore, we have things like this measles outbreak that's been ongoing. And, uh, you know, you think about the dread diseases like polio that were rampant when Bill and I were young. 
Yes. Pray God that never comes back. But you just don't know. And if if we don't pretty much universally inoculate people, we're going to have these kinds of problems. And as a nurse and director of nursing, no less, uh, where do you stand with the old people who used to always get their kids inoculated? Or do you see that there are things that, that can go wrong? Actually, in Logan County, we haven't had many people not want to vaccinate their children for the reasons that the rest of the world always talks about. Um, basically, the biggest thing that people don't want, the reason they don't want to vaccinate their children is because they think that they cause autism. Um, there was a study back in 1997 that a lot of the facts were falsified, and there was no proof that that actually was true. And if that were true, then honestly, why aren't all the children? Why don't they all have autism? Um, on a personal level, I have two young children, and I would never not vaccinate them. They receive their flu shots every year. They have every vaccination that they could get when they're supposed to get it. Um, on a professional level, it's very frustrating to me because of how I feel personally. Um, in the health department, we vaccinate all different types of classes of people, I guess I should say. There's people who come in who don't have any insurance, so we provide vaccinations for them for free. Um, a lot of people don't know of the free vaccine program, or they don't take their children to the doctor, so they're late getting their vaccines, and that's one of the reasons why some of these diseases are coming back, is because it's been, you know, um, their pe kids are to get their vaccines at birth, two months, four months, six months, and sometimes they don't, they're, they're late, so then they end up getting diseases. The measles outbreak, the, most of those children weren't able to get the vaccine. So weren't able to because you can't receive that vaccine until you're a year old. I see. Yes. <coughs> oh, so it was hitting the little tiny yes, people. Yes. Twelve of them were under the age of one. Uh huh. Up in Chicago. And the thing is, uh, these these people die. Yes. I, you know, I I dare say when I, when I had my kids vaccinated, I didn't think of measles so much as being a cause of death in people as I did the fact that they'd be miserable for a while with the measles, and there's no point in having them if you don't have to. You know, right. if yeah. you don't need to get the measles because you can get the shot, don't have the measles. I know. I don't know why someone would want their children to have the measles if there's a way to prevent it. I don't know. I mean, yeah. same same with cancer. If you knew that there was something out there you could do to prevent cancer, why wouldn't you do it? Especially if it was as simple as a shot. Exactly. And there actually is a shot for for, can, for cancer. And, and um, uh -huh. HPV is a form of cancer that can cause cervical cancer, and there is a vaccine for that. Really? Now. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yes. You have to be less than younger than 25 to get it. So uh -huh. <laughs> we no. were younger than 25. <laughs> Bill, don't you remember? Uh, no. <laughs> Seriously, um, yes, I remember 25. I was married then, so I remember 25. Uh, you mentioned your your folks that can get vaccinations there at, at the health department. Just as an aside, uh, a lot of folks. Uh, find it difficult to get an appointment for no other reason than busy schedules and so forth uh, at their own private uh, personal physicians mm -hmm. have their nurses come in and get the inoculations and very candidly it's a lot easier to go over to the public health department and uh, get your vaccinations there and, and I find that a great service. Yeah and actually we take Blue Cross Blue Shield now we take um, all Medicaid of course even the mm -hmm. supplement plans that people have we take Medicare Part B and Part D um, as of now. It's um, a great service. Yeah we're starting to be able to bill all <coughs> insurance companies we're working on contracts with all of the rest of them that most people have um, so before too much longer anyone will be able to just walk into the health department receive a vaccine we can bill your insurance and you're good to go you don't have to make an appointment you can come in at your leisure Monday through Friday 8 to 4 30 7 30 to 4 30 and that back. that's that's an attractive feature that you have too. this oh, business of service. not having to have an appointment you know if you're if you're just going to have to go downtown for instance for something it isn't <coughs> excuse me very far from what happened <laughs> Well, I know what happens is she sits next to me and she gets all choked up. It's as simple as that. 
it's a it's a it's a, it's a gossip phenomenon. <laughs> oh, okay. Serious, serious. You, you can stop by there any time from what is it eight to five? Seven thirty to four thirty. Seven thirty to four thirty. Just drop in. Yeah, you don't have to. Oh, have that's, a, that's a road. Of, let me ask you a question about the measles. There's this old saw about. Uh, they cause uh, eye troubles. Now, is there any correlation to that? And I'm asking because when I was a kid, I had all those, I had the mumps, the chicken pox, the measles, like everybody else at that time did. They'd come along and put it on your house, go to red sign, uh, diphtheria. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. Really? They had well, she quarantine. probably doesn't know that. No, no. No one's uh, had diphtheria that I know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I had the measles, and my shortly thereafter, my eyes. Uh, went south and I had to start wearing glasses at a very very early age is there any correlation to that or is there that is. just a, no, there, there is, is. Yes, there, there, is. is. there is that's yes. interesting yes uh, so that is one of the <coughs> side effects then. yes and death <laughs> but besides, I, remember, I mean before I remember death this, I remember this so vividly is that uh, my room was kept totally dark right Mm -hmm. The mother had the shades drawn and all that, and uh, God forbid I should go open up a shade because, uh, anyway, that's a side issue. Uh, there, there's a direct correlation: measles and and yes. eye problems. Yes, there is. Yes. And you know, there are some children who cannot be vaccinated. Children who have a cancer, um, any immune problems. If um, I have a friend that has a, a little girl that has a heart problems, she can never have a live vaccine. And the measles, mumps, and rubella vaccine is a live vaccine. So meaning for her entire life, she can never have one of these vaccines. So she is very prone to, to getting measles. And that's that's sad. Which really enhances the value of the rest of us having vaccines. Yes, that's why it is so important that healthy people get a vaccine because so the unhealthy people don't get sick because that's not fair to them. Would I dare say that it's kind of being narcissistic to uh, think about not taking advantage of vaccines because people like this little girl I could get the measles and pass that on to her, and in her case, it would be devastating. It could be devastating, yes. Yes. Kara, you're, how long have you been with us at, uh, over there on 3rd Street? Just since November. Uh, have you found, uh, well, every day is challenges, of course, <laughs> dummy. Uh, what has been the major challenge that you have found as you have come aboard there? Oh, well, I came from a hospital, so I had no oh. public health knowledge, oh. except for what I learned in nursing school, which was 14 years ago. Mm -hmm. So I, everything has been a challenge for me, learning everything. For one, when I took my children in to get their vaccinations, I was like, okay, they're four months old, give them their vaccinations. I never questioned what they were. So uh -huh. when I came into this job, I was like, oh, that's what they get at four months? That's what they get at six months? I didn't have a clue. I knew what vaccines existed, but I didn't know which ones they received at what time. Well, it's it's it goes back to being a rule follower. <laughs> I guess you know, I the am. doctor gives you the baby and says, this one is yours. <laughs> And you do the appropriate things. And so you're told at four months you're supposed to have them inoculated. What do you do? That's what you do. Yeah. You don't ask them, well, what is this that you're doing here? I really never did either. Well, sometimes I did, I did, but, you know, I never questioned it because it was never an option for me. No. It was never an option for me. Getting back to you brought up HPV vaccines. Mm -hmm. um, it's a, speaking of controversy. <laughs> that is a controversial one. <laughs> That's a big controversy. Um, what's your take on that? Oh, I, when my children turn 11 years old, they will definitely have the HPV vaccine. Because if it can prevent cancer, I don't want them to get cancer. I'm a worry ward anyway. I worry every other month that they have cancer of some sort anyway. So I need to prevent whatever I oh, can I prevent. Think that's a natural proclivity, so that I wouldn't worry about I that. I think it's a mom thing. <laughs> well, and being being yes, a nurse exactly. too. And yeah, that has made it a little bit it. worse. <laughs> it would. It would. I would think. Yeah. Uh, but it's it's for female children. You no know, males can get it as well. Is that right? Mm -hmm. I I didn't know that. Yes. But it at 11 is the age <coughs> at which they should have. Yes, and they can have it all the way up to 25. because The vaccine hasn't been out very long. Um, only, I'm not even sure how long it's been out, to be honest with you. It's very few years. Yeah, it very hasn't been few. that many. 
So um, that's why they offer it up to 25. Um, so the kids that are 25 that have, I say kids, listen to me. <laughs> well, we're all relative. <laughs> uh, um, so they could still receive that vaccine mm-hmm. and be prevented. So that, uh-huh. that's... You're a young lady. Uh, tell us a little bit about your... Uh, your uh, your educational background and how we came to be lucky enough to have you come aboard here at our public health department. Well, I graduated from St. John's College Department of Nursing in Springfield. It was a two-year program. It was a bachelor's program, so I do have a bachelor's degree. After I graduated from St. John's, I took a job there on the post-surgical floor, taking care of patients after they had um, a bowel resection or colostomy or thyroidectomy. Any sort of surgery, I, I would take care of those patients. Um, I made my way around the hospital doing numerous things. I was assistant manager of orthopedics. Then I became charge nurse of orthopedics. And then I went back to being a staff nurse on the post-surgical floor once I had children. Mm-hmm. And then I got hurt last year. I actually fell and dislocated my kneecap. And uh, working 12 hours, three days a week on the floor wasn't help. something that I could handle much right. anymore. Right. So I saw the job opening while I was actually on leave from the hospital and contemplating applying finally I did and I got it I was so excited to go to a normal Monday through Friday job yeah (laughs) because for 14 years I worked Mm -hmm. every other weekend I worked holidays shift work and all that yeah Uh, hospital is like prison they hold it every day (laughs) they are they never close close for Christmas they never close so it, it was it was it's been a nice change it's been nice having you know um what call it? Martin Luther King Day. I had that off. I don't know if I've ever had Martin Luther King's birthday off. <laughs> well, people stay sick on holidays for some reason. <laughs> yeah, they do. They have surgery on holidays, and they stay sick on holidays, and they have car accidents on holidays. Yeah. So. So do you like, other than the hours, is public health nursing the place to be? Do you think that's where it's happening? I do. I mean, you know, you're not just helping one person like you are in the hospital. You're really helping a whole community. You're really trying to keep everybody well, which which is something I've never experienced before. I've usually just tried taking care of pain and nausea and making people heal. Now I'm keeping them well. So I just, I don't know, it just is a different aspect, and, and I do, and I enjoy it. Well, one thing you have going for you there, you've got a great staff. Like that we do. That we really do. They're, we're very close. Everybody knows everybody. It's, they're all from the area. It's just, it's it's nice. Well, my, Gene's, my, our experience has been that you really have a, a dedicated staff, and, and yeah. always very present and very personable, and and very professional. So, Thank and speaking of professions, uh, if Mr. Ash is uh, getting close to being ready, we probably should be professional and acknowledge our sponsors. So, right ahead, James. And right back, I have a viewpoint of the program with personalities, politicians, and perspectives. And our personality and our perspective this morning is that. Kara Davis. She is the director of nursing at Oregon County Public Health Department and an assistant administrator. We're glad to have Kara come back aboard, come aboard here at uh, out there at our facility on Third Street. She had a big job, uh, as we alluded to earlier. She's got a great staff to help her with this big job. And uh, I, I was just sitting here thinking on break, uh, if, if this, fighting this cold out for the last two days, or I mean two weeks. And if you would do a little research and come up with a uh, talk about vaccinations and inoculations a cold inoculation you would be the uh, dr jonas sock of uh, logan county and the world if you could get a probably and i'm sure that there are people around the world trying to figure that out right now as we speak (laughs) especially after this past winter we have had bonanza that would be for millions of people (laughs) you know i i don't know if i understand the quote common unquote cold in that people get a cold and they say well i know what it was i went out in the night air last night or I know what it is I uh, I, my hair was wet when I went out those are all old wise tales (laughs) I shook hands hands with the wrong person that's probably what happened yeah yeah. yeah, exactly and didn't wash (laughs) yeah Uh, so so where do you where do you stand on telling people no if you go out in the night air you're safe unless somebody coughs in your face out there. That's right. It's all about hand washing. All about hand washing. Well, what Wash about your the hands. gel hand stuff? That's fine, too. That's fine, too. Well, now there are two sides to that. I know, with the alcohol. everything. And, yeah. That and that 
we're using too much of that sort of thing and too much uh, antibiotics, for instance, and we're all going to have super germs that are yeah. going to w- that's step a whole into nother, a phone book. That's a whole nother talk show. Well, you're not spo- you're <laughs> well not let's to, just you're not, you're give <laughs> us the Reader's Digest version. You're just not supposed to breathe in the wrong places, that's all. Yeah, Simple as that. Avoid breathing yeah. and you'll be okay. Yeah. You know, but that's true about anything. Everything evolves. You become <clears> immune <throat> to antibiotics. You get more bugs that are worse than the last bug. I mean, that just happens and that's going to happen. And where people are trying to be more proactive and staying healthy, so we're using the hand gels, we're taking more probiotics, we're taking more vitamins, and so then these bugs have to evolve. It's like how humans evolve, it just happens. So if you have a cold, or if your baby has a cold, do you run to the doctor with the baby and and want to give in our case our baby is a boy Mm -hmm. so do you want to give him uh, antibiotics so they're they're very they don't give antibiotics hardly at all anymore they don't um is that right yeah, usually huh. you have to have a cold with green drainage for about two weeks before they'll give you any antibiotics. Because if it's do they something think that it lingers. might be a sinus infection rather than... No, because if it was an infection, they would give you antibiotics. They think it's just a virus. They usually say virus nine times out of ten, and then there's nothing to do for a virus. A so, virus is. Yeah, you can't use an antibiotic on a virus. Yeah, it, it, it just it has just to run its there. course. It's there until yeah. it runs its course. Right. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, um, as you come aboard here, at the, have you found any particular challenges that might be peculiar just to this area uh, as opposed to... Farm accidents. Yeah. <laughs> that has nothing yeah. to do with us. <laughs> yeah. um, no, not really. Mm-hmm. I don't think... Um, Logan County is a smaller county of about 30,000, so yes. you know we're not like Sangamon. I think they have in the 200,000s, maybe more. Um, so no, I haven't really pinpointed one thing. I mean, there are challenges with everything. I know that we're working on something with the um, hospital right now called the iPlan, and we're trying to figure out different things in the community we can work on in, for the next five years. And um, one thing the hospital is going to concentrate on and the doctor's offices is having more primary care physicians available to the public because that's one thing that people are finding hard to get into their physicians or their physicians are going to be retiring who have uh, lots and lots of patients. So that's something that the hospital and the health department or the doctor's offices are going to be working on. One thing we're going to be working on is um, obesity is very high for Logan County. Well, isn't it like the highest yeah in the we, state? I wasn't gonna say that but yes <laughs> yes <sorry>. it is <laughs> outside of Chicago because it's not counted in any of the numbers so but yes yes Logan County is the highest in the state of obesity I don't think I didn't see yeah. she, she keeps up she reads she knows yeah. what's going on I had I didn't realize well that. Buzz told me I'd be smart if I read something worthwhile <laughs> but I like mysteries another um, thing that's high is smoking while pregnant Logan County is very high that's for people who smoke while they're pregnant. Oh, because that's been in the forefront for a long time. Don't drink, don't smoke while you're pregnant. Yep. Of course, in the in the olden olden days, my mom said that after you'd have your baby, they just encouraged all the mothers to be nursing mothers. And they offered, of course, this was up in northern Wisconsin, but at any rate, uh, she said that it was the happiest place in the hospital because they gave all the mothers beer anytime they wanted it because it would, <laughs> it would your milk make for in. good milk. Yeah, that's what, that's what they say. I don't know how true that really is. Well, though, the mothers were happy anyway. Yeah, I think they do that in England, too. I think they give them all a beer. To is that make, right? Yeah. To of course, make they're not pregnant milk. after they've had their baby, yeah. usually. Um, but anyway, uh, things things just change, don't they? Yeah. Let's talk about the flu and pneumonia vaccines. The flu season should be on the wane by now. Yes, it's it? usually so. the end of March is when we stop we stop saying it's flu season. It's usually mm-hmm. September 1st through March 31st, um, and then pretty much flu season's over for the year. We can hope this has been an extremely bad one, so we can hope that it is over at the end of March. Now, I came to understand that although when they developed the vaccine that for this year, it's flu season, they didn't quite guess, and I guess that's the only th- word you can use is guess, which strain it would be. Yes. But if 
if you did get the flu vaccine, which we did anyway, mm -hmm. didn't we? Yeah, you bet. Um, they say if you got the flu, you'd be liable to get a less virulent case. Yes. And w did that prove to be the case? You know, I... Uh, it's up in the air. It's really up in the air because they really did all the wrong strains in the vaccines this year. So maybe it was just pure luck. <laughs> but how? Well, it would have to be if you're going to have to guess. How do you know what's going to come next? September I don't know how they figure out. that out. I don't know how. Uh, and also pneumonia vaccines. Now, what about that? That's a whole different ballgame. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, that's you brought up a point. Go right ahead with your with your thought, please, because I want to ask a question after that. You do that. Uh, well, pneumonia <laughs> vaccine. Yes. Uh, I'm in the VA system, health system. Uh, I go down to Springfield and my uh, see my doctor. Uh, my primary doctor is right here in Lincoln, of course. But I stay in the VA system. In case something ever goes south on me, I might have to go in for long-term care. I could go to Danville or Quincy. Mm -hmm. In any event, um, a nurse asked me, uh, the doctor asked me the other day when I was down there for the semi-annual visit uh, if I had the, the inoculations and then courses and they asked me did you have a pneumonia and I said yes what type now I didn't know there was a different there type there are so, two now so yes. yeah uh, tell me about that why did he ask that and what are the differences well you? there's a booster now for people that are over the age of 65 oh, that boy. it has been That's a year us. since they received the original pneumonia vaccine mm -hmm. um, which is called pneumovax so there's a pneumovax which is the original and then there's a private R13, which is the booster. So if you're over the age of 65 and you have, it's been a year since you had the Pneumovax, you are eligible to have the Prevnar 13, which will be good for the rest of your life. And um, we offer that at the health department. We have that now, and Medicare Part B pays for that 100%. So we mm -hmm. and we offer that um, when we're open. So. Oh. Feel free to come down and get one. <laughs> now, <laughs> the pneumonia shot. No, you can get that anytime. You can get the pneumonia vaccines anytime you like. That's interesting because I remember I had a touch of that uh, a year or so ago, and Dr. Wahab said that's pretty serious business. You don't want to mess around with it. Right. You don't want to mess around with pneumonia. Mm -hmm. Not at all. But no, we offer the vaccine 12 months out of the year, and it's perfectly fine to get 12 months out of the year. Now, the flu vaccine, obviously, we really don't recommend that no, no. except during flu season. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it is available um, September through June. But your record will show what kind I got. If you're in the system, yes. But if you probably have not had the Prevnar 13, which is the booster, because that's fairly new in the last couple of years. Well, so if you haven't gotten in the last few years, you've... I probably. had one, I think, last time. I you think. did? So maybe well, that... Well, anyway, that's personal. Let's get on with it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> is it Station. true that once you've had pneumonia, you're more susceptible? Yes. <clears throat> yes. That's interesting. Uh, now, with back to the flu shot, uh, you can actually get the flu the flu the first of April it, just because the, the they consider so. the 31st of March the end of flu season really the next day you could come oh, up yes you could yes it's not a rule right that is not a rule that's okay, correct you good. can get the flu in July but yes <laughs> they consider high peak flu season to be September 1st through March 31st but you don't have to right okay um, I uh, I also wanted to ask about this new booster. How would you know whether you'd had that? Um, that'd be your personal records or if your doctor gave it to you. Do you advise, I, I've never had pneumonia. Do you advise people like me to have that Definitely. vaccine? Definitely. You Definitely, do. yes. Okay. Yes. Well, maybe I better check on that in my spare time. We can yeah. hold hands and get it together. Yeah, you we can could. call your doctor and ask your doctor if they think that you should have it, but nine times out of ten, they're going to tell you yes. You well, because it, it wouldn't hurt anything. No. No, it's not going to hurt anything. So really, is your opinion, I'm kind of gathering, your opinion is that if a vaccine is available... Take advantage of it. Why wouldn't you? I just, I just, I ha it fathoms me that people don't take advantage of things that are good for their health. I mean, mm -hmm. I know people smoke and they know smoking causes cancer, but and they still smoke. But if there's a vaccine available that can help you not get the flu and not get pneumonia, if you've ever had the flu or ever had pneumonia, you know how horrible that is. Why would you want to have that fun. again? No, of course. And, and I had the chicken pox when I was in eighth grade. Mm -hmm. My children have both been vaccinated for it. I 
would never want them to have that. It was a horrible experience. I can't imagine people wanting their ch children to have that and not being vaccinated for it. I just, I don't, as a mom, I just don't understand why would you want to put that on your children? My brother and I were six and eight when we got the chicken pox and brought them home to our brother who was three months old. Who? Yeah, and so he had, I mean, it didn't take many chicken pox to cover Jimmy. You know? Yeah. <laughs> he was yeah. just a little boy. Yeah, that yeah. wasn't good. Uh, it interested me that you said that you were involved in the th uh, orthopedics department at St. John's mm -hmm. for a number of years. I dare say most of my friends have replacement parts. Any more, we're kind of like a car. They give you a new fender, a new bumper, and send you on your way, you know? <laughs> it's really a booming business. That, that it is. Why? Now, I don't remember a number, a number, number of years ago there being so many replacements. What's the deal? Well, people are living longer, for one thing. Yeah, that's yes. so, I mean. <laughs> yeah, seriously, you know, it used to be, uh, well, not too many years ago that people in the 90s and, and uh, were not so many. There's a lot of them now. Well, and people are more active at the older they are, too. Um, I know one of the patients I actually took care of at the hospital, she was 87 and having a total knee. You know, 87. Most 87-year-olds 10 years ago were in a nursing home or in the ground. You know? Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. true. I mean, they weren't getting knee replacements, but she was still active, driving, living alone. So, I mean, that that's the reason. It's because people are living longer and they're more active. Our doctor a number of years ago was Ed Ulrich. And uh, he, I remember him saying, if you live long enough, you're going to get everything. That's right. And it, it's true. It yeah. gives you more time. And one of the other factors is um, obesity. You know, your hips and knees give out because that carries you. So oh. a lot, a lot of patients that came in for hips and knees were overweight. You raised the but not all of them. Yeah. Not all of them. Well. I mean, don't oh, get me wrong. A lot's arthritis. You know, I mean, there are people who are on their feet 24-7 for their jobs, and it causes, you know, it to uh, degenerate. So they end up getting arthritis, and that's another reason they have to have replacements. One not just obesity. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to point fingers. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the big uh, uh, elephants in the health world is the O word that you just mentioned, obesity. Yeah. Uh, that seems to be... Almost pandemic. I mean, yeah. it's, it's just incredible how many people. There's a lot of good food out there. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, and there's a lot of TV and video games out there too. Yeah, there you point. That's yeah. activity that's a problem. Activities. Activity. Actually, Logan County has an initiative right now. It's called Five Two One Zero. It's yep. five servings of fruits and vegetables, two hours of screen time or less a day, which is TV, iPads, video games, one hour of physical activity and no sugary beverages so they are saying no sugary beverages and that's that's geared more towards children but I mean it could work for adults too I mean mm -hmm. I think about how much I'm on the screen I'm on there way more than two hours a day even on the weekends well you know in New York they even had a, a law where uh, you couldn't get a big bottle of pop you could just or a glass of pop mm -hmm paper cup of pop. You could just get the little paper cup of pop. Mm -hmm. Well, what about diet pop? Oh, don't get me started on diet soda. That's a whole new conversation as well. Oh, well, <laughs> go ahead. Just bite the bullet. <laughs> <laughs> it has aspartame in it. You know, you shouldn't, aspartame is known to cause cancer, known to cause a lot of other things, and that's what's in diet soda. And also, it does something with the insulin in your body. You think because you're diabetic, you could drink diet soda, but it actually adds more insulin, makes you gain more weight. It's not good for you if you do all, read all the recent studies on it. But once again, these are studies that have to be proven false by people in the diet in the diet soda industry. Um, but, you know, if they don't want you to drink sugary beverages, water's the best bet anyway. In real life. Yeah. But uh, what about people like me? I don't think I'm the only one, but maybe I am, uh, who just discounts automatically off the top any of these things that come out because I remember a number of years ago they said oh my gosh don't use sugar the world will end and you'll just yeah drop that's true and that's when Splenda came out yeah well you have to, you <laughs> yeah. have to use uh, 
the first one was saccharin, I think. You're supposed That's to use correct. you're supposed to use that instead. And then pretty soon they had a study and said, Oh my gosh, don't use that saccharin. Good grief, do you know what's gonna happen to yeah. you? So you have to use sugar instead. Well, then it's don't drink real coffee, drink the unleaded version because <laughs> that's better for you without the caffeine in it. Well, gee, and then they had a study that said, don't drink unleaded coffee for holy cow. Do you know how they process that yeah. in formaldehyde? <laughs> well, so, I figure if you got a study, don't bother me. Yeah, that's true. That is true. Yeah, that's true. Am I not? Yeah, the, yeah that's true. I'm not the only one then. No, you're thinks, not. It's, you know, it's... You don't know. <laughs> we, will we ever know? <laughs> uh, well, Kara, we won't live that long. <laughs> as we wind down this morning, and unfortunately the clock is doing that to us, um, just if you wish to uh, comment about uh, your your duties there and our, and our challenges, and how could the public help you help the public? I guess well, that's a question I ask. For one thing, people can come in and receive their vaccinations from us. That's helpful. We also have a dental clinic that's open Monday through yes. Thursday from 7.30 to 4. Um, they are great. Our dentist and our dental hygienist and our dental assistant are three wonderful ladies, and they are so great. They do children, and they do adults, and that's one thing we're really trying to build is our dental clinics. So, oh, that's um, so important. Yes, we have that, and then we have we have a home health agency at the health department, um, and they are wonderful. They yes. they are such a great group. I of can ladies. attest to that. Oh, can you? Yes, most definitely. They they came to our house uh, for my husband. Oh, good. Yes. And uh, it was it, that is a wonderful service. Yes, it really is, and they are so great. You don't know yes. it until you need it. And they have. They do therapy, physical therapy, occupational therapy. The nurses can come out for dressing changes. Um, so once again, if you have a total hip or total knee, we can be your health department. You can be your home health agency at the health department to come out there and help you get back on your feet again. And all you would have to do in order to get that. hooked up to the Logan County Department of Public Health, home health, is tell them when they... Te when yes, the social worker will come in to your room after you have surgery yes. and say you're going to need home health, yes. do you have an agency you'd like to use and say, yes, I want Logan County Health Department's home health agency. It's called Home Care of Central Illinois. But if you say Logan County, most of the social workers in the area know that. And we go all over. We don't just do Logan County. We They have some patients in Mason City. They've done some in Williamsville and some in Sherman. So we do other counties just besides Logan County. So, I mean, if you, even if you don't live in Logan County and you want to use our health department, you know, don't hesitate to ask. They can always call. They're and marvelous. Yeah, they are really great. Well, they're and I'm, and I, but I'm not biased at all. I know that. <laughs> well, I think we, we, we'll give you your bias and, <laughs> and nod in your direction with affirmation on that. Uh, we appreciate, Kara Davis, your, your being with us this morning. You know, we're talking about longevity, and I remember some time ago, I think I mentioned this once before, Jim. Uh, some time ago, there's a lady who got to be 106 or 7 up above Bloomington. And they had a nice little article about her in the pantograph and, and uh, said, well, Aunt Mary, to what you attribute your longevity? The most, the most succinct answers I ever heard. She says, well, I didn't die. <laughs> I love it. I thought that was the greatest, greatest answer I ever heard to any question. <laughs> but closing with her comment about the health and so forth, I read this comment and said, I believe that the best buy in public health today must be a combination of regular physical exercise and a healthy diet. Mm -hmm. What else? Thank you, Kara Davis, for being Thank with you. us this morning. Appreciate it. Thank you it. so much.